Hello, welcome. So today we're going to discuss some of the different options you have on the L322 Range Rover for the air strut replacement. In a previous video I showed you how to remove this air strut from the vehicle. And in this video I'm going to show you we're going to, uh, how to actually recondition it. And we're going to talk about some of the ways you, you know, the options you have for, for replacing an air strut. So the first option you have is uh, the most expensive option and that's to purchase an entire new air strut assembly. And so when talking about the air strut, we talk about two, two parts. One is the shock absorber, the actual gas-filled oil shock absorber. And the second part of the strut assembly is the spring, the air spring. So when we're talking about purchasing a brand new unit, you're talking about purchasing an entire new unit, and that's about $1,000 roughly. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Now, a lot of people don't like to pay that. So there's another option. A second option is to purchase a refurbished unit. And a refurbished unit is someone else's gas strut and a brand new air spring. Now, R0 Industries offers this refurbished package. And what you do, I believe, is about roughly $300 for the refurbished air strut and a $100 core charge. So when you're done, you send them back your old unit. And what you get is you get someone else's older, you know, someone else's used strut and a brand new, completely refurbished rubber air spring. That's about $300 and a $100 core charge. Third option, which is what I chose to do, and which is what I will show you how we're going to accomplish those steps today, is I ordered from R0 Industries a brand new and slightly redesigned air spring. Um, and I'm going to fit this new air spring to my, my original uh, strut that came off my vehicle. And I wanted to stick with my strut off my vehicle because I know my strut off my vehicle is in working condition. And the air spring from our industries, the new air bellows, new air spring, actually was a little bit redesigned. I liked the way it looked and hopefully it'll give me a little bit more performance. So today we're going to go through the steps on how to remove this air, air spring assembly from the air strut. The first step to reconditioning your L322 air strut is to remove the top bolt that secures the strut piston to the top of the air spring. You can see here right in the frame, it's that bolt right in the center. Now, if your bolt is anything like mine, with 95,000 miles on the car, that bolt is very rusty. So spend some time spraying some liquid wrench on that bolt and uh, you're gonna probably have to clean up the threads uh, like I did. Uh, and you'll definitely need to use an air gun. You'll need a 24 millimeter socket, impact socket. And you're gonna need to use this impact wrench to get this off because the shaft behind that bolt can spin. And there's a lot of pressure on it and it's probably really rusty. So, no choice but just to get after it. The next step is to get this locking washer off of this assembly here, this kind of spindle or kind of shaft, plastic shaft. There's a plastic locking washer underneath and you're going to simply pry it off as best as you can. Next, with the locking washer off, we're going to gently tap this plastic housing here. This is a plastic housing and it rests on a steel plate. We're going to gently tap it down. Uh, preferably you would have a rubber mallet or a lead shot mallet. I don't. All I have is a block of wood and a hammer. We're going to gently see if we can dislodge it. And it is moving, and we will continue to move it off of the shelf. There it goes. Now that I've begun to free the uh, lower plastic bell housing away from the strut, this is a good time to show you how deteriorated, you know, as this folds under, how deteriorated this rubber can can become. So this air spring is being replaced at approximately 95,000 miles on this L322 Range Rover. Uh, that's probably the upper limit of how far you'll get on the original pair of air springs. It all depends on the climate your vehicle is being operated in. 
Uh, but you see that as the vehicle rides, this part of the rubber, as it curves under this bell housing, uh, receives the most amount of wear of a constant movement up and down. This is uh, the result. You get fatigue and cracking and dry rotting. And either th either this is where the leak is coming from. Most likely this is not where the leak's coming from, though. This is probably just a sign of the condition of the bag. The leak is probably actually coming from either here, you know, the, the O-ring seals, uh, or the actual junction of the bag to the strut. So we've already done all the hard work here. We've begun to remove this plastic housing away from this plate. We've got the bolts off the top of the air spring, and now we should just be able to continue the process of removing this air spring from the strut. Just work it off. And there we go. The spring should now simply come away from the strut. And we're left with some O-rings, the strut, and the air spring. So now we'll clean all this up extensively and go ahead and replace it with our brand new air spring. So now that we have the two components separate, you know, we have the air spring and the strut separate, you can kind of begin to see how this all works. You have a normal strut, and this air spring fits over it and seals. The air spring actually has these gaskets, these big O-rings, and so it looks like it has a set that seal on the bottom and a set that seal on the top. Uh, and I would imagine these are the seals that have broken, that have caused my major catastrophic leak, or perhaps there's something in the bag that's broken. But so you see how the entire assembly goes over. So it's critical that we actually clean this as well as, 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 well as we can, as good as we can, it's because otherwise the new bag uh, may develop leaks. So it's important to clean all this area off, the entire strut as clean as possible, to prepare it for our brand new uh, sealing uh, surfaces with our brand All right, so this is the exciting bit. I've got my new air springs from Arnott. We're just going to tear into them here and see what they look like. All right, we've got our bump stops and replacement bolts and so forth. Very nice packaging. Ooh, here it is. Very pretty. Very beautiful CNC machine aluminum. Much heavier. This is all aluminum. And there it is. So we'll go through the steps to put this on. So here we can see all the components we need to assemble the new air spring. Not too many components here. We got a, a bump stop, a couple of washers, gold washer, black washer, and the top uh, bump stop there, or grommet for the spring, nut, locking washer, our old air strut, and of course the new uh, air spring itself. And actually, the assembly looks to be a little bit simpler than the OEM. I don't see, I mean, I see some really really very large o-rings right inside of here that's a good sign two of them in fact it's a good indication that perhaps there's some very significant sealing going on here hopefully better than uh, better than the previous design and uh, we'll start to put it all together all right pretty simple stuff we we'll start with this bump stop I'm gonna get a little bit of a spray here this is kind of a silicone based uh, lube water diluted I slide this over all the way down the shaft here. There we go. Next we have the gold washer. And the gold washer has two sides. There's a, a cup side with a lip. And that goes down apparently. That's extremely important. Lip faces down. So that makes sense. Um, goes on right there. And then the next we're going to put on the actual air spring. So this next part is actually very important. Um, we're going to slide this down on through the shaft here, lining this locking pin up with the uh, hole for this locking pin on the plate, the bottom plate on the strut. Remember the gold washer is in place, lip facing downwards, those flat surfaces on the top. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this all lined up. Not too much trouble. Pull this down. Okay. Put it into the locking position right there. Alright. 
Now we need to put our locking pin on, locking washer. And I'll secure that all the way in a second. I'm going to unscrew this so we get some air pressure out. All right, so this next bit also requires some very special attention. The instructions are very specific. Um, this last rubber washer should uh, should go in like this. There's two sides. There's this lipped kind of side, this uh, you know, kind of dimpled side, I guess, and there's this flat side. This flat side should go up, I believe, so it seals properly. The last washer, the lip faces up, and we'll just bolt it together, and we'll be all done and ready to put it back into the vehicle. Simple as that. So upon closer inspection, once this is all completed, I can kind of see the logic behind these washers and rubber spacers, how they're set up. So you see how this, this is the bottom side of this rubber spacer. What happens is there's a lot of material here. When you tighten this up, it's crushed and seals against the surface at the top of the bag. If you can look at the top of the bag, there's a rubber surface here. It's a beautiful design because this goes in, fits in quite snugly, and when you drive home this final nut, this, this, this compresses, changes shape and compresses and seals against the surface. This is never going to leak. I mean, this is an amazing uh, sealed surface. And the reason why this washer faces up is because if it faced down, when you flatten it, this would bite into the, this lip would bite into this rubber surface. So that goes up. Uh, nice design. Really, really solid uh, the way it seals. Again, this uh, lip, this big ridge on the rubber spacer goes into the pocket there crush it into place and it seals quite nicely. So after assembling the second air spring I actually realized that this does rotate. This head does pivot. I just hadn't uh, been able to move it enough. to enough force on it. So this head does, does pivot. Very few differences between this and the OEM except it does look a lot tougher. So we're gonna put it in the car and see how it does.